Hi, I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard um, from Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. Today we have a video, a video, um, and we're doing a sew along, a sew along where Gigi Bai will be leading us through Jen Kingwell's The Gypsy Wife Quilt, which is awesome. Um, so these are videos that Gigi will produce um, and help us understand how to do it. And Corey Dutton, um, a law student, is going to learn to quilt. So um, it's for beginners, advanced people, even law students. Um, and it will be great. So uh, I hope this helps. So where do you find the pattern? Um, Jen Kinkwell's pattern can be found at Amazon. It's again called the Gypsy Wife Quilt. It's super popular. You can also get it at Uptown Needle and Craftworks here in New Orleans. Just um, look them up online and call them or at any quilt shop. So get the pattern and join us. Okay, to do our square and a square with courthouse steps, we cut one square um, a four and a quarter. And then we cut our strips according to the instructions on page 23. And we're going to put our shoulder strips on opposite sides, then our longer strips on the other side of those. Then we'll come back and we'll add, just like when we were paper piecing, um, we're gonna add our um, corners to make it a square and a square. Then we add another border on top of that. I think it ends up being 10 and a half inches um, big once we're done. So this is kind of a bigger of our squares. We um, are not paper piecing this one, so we need to look and be careful that we are getting a scant quarter an inch seam when we are sewing along this edge so that all of our seams, then we'll get the right size block in the end, so our seams are the right size. I um, actually use, let's see if I can lift it up for y'all, on my machine, it's from Quilt in a Day, and it is a grid that just, it double sticks down and it's easily taken off, I can put it on another machine. But what happens is I can lay my fabric edge here and there's my stitch line. So I don't really watch my foot. I watch where the edge of my fabric is and this is exactly a quarter of an inch. It also works when you're doing triangles or flying geese, um, half square triangles. It works really well when doing those. So I keep that on my machine to help when I'm piecing a lot of things like I'm doing today. So you just line up that center where it says stitch line. I line that up with my needle, put it right in front of my machine. Um, not where my feed dogs are, right in front of my feed dogs so it doesn't get caught. And then it just sticks down, and then I'm able to use that as my guide. Now, on other machines, I've got a fourth of an inch foot that I really like. It has kind of a an edge to it that you can butt the fabric up against, so if it goes in here like this, I can get, use that as my guide. On this machine, I don't have a foot like that, so this helps me to keep it a good fourth of an inch, um, or scant fourth of an inch, as it were. Okay. Okay, so we have our borders around our um, square, uh, square courthouse steps. Now I'm going to be adding um, on either side a triangle, and then I'll come back and add one on this side and that side, and then we border that again. We go the opposite sides of each other um, to get um, a good crossover when we go to sew these on. You do want your triangles centered on here um, without it, um, and, and these little dog ears, that's good that they're over here. You want that extra on either side because when we put this piece on, we're going to need a quarter of an inch extra for those guys to be able to match up. Let me sew this one on and then we'll look at that so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll do the two opposite sides, then we'll do these two opposite sides uh, before we border it. So now you can see where they're meeting up here. You want them to cross over, so those dog ears will cross over each other so that when you flip it, sorry, I didn't pin both sides. When you flip it up, there's enough space there. There's a good quarter inch there for your next seam that you need to put in here. So I'll sew these two sides and then we'll flip it open, press it, flip it open, and add our final board. So now we have all our corners on, and we're ready to add our um, last borders for our courthouse steps. And I'll put them on right sides and flip them up. Um, I think I'm going to go through and cut off all these little dog ears, just so that while I'm sewing, they won't be in the way, and we can have it all evened up. 
Okay, and we'll get our last st courthouse steps on, and that'll be the end of this one. Okay, so here is our square and a square courthouse steps. Um, it measures 10 and a half, and if you go by her instructions in the booklet, um, I think it's page 23, it, and cut it two and seven eighths or whatever, three and seven eighths, it comes out perfectly. So um, just be careful when you go to iron it that you're not stretching it out and making it go wonky. So now we're gonna move on to the color wheel. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard from Just Wanna Quilt. You've been listening to Gigi Bai take us through an aspect of the Gypsy Wife Quilt by Jen Kingwell. Make sure you get the pattern. You can get the pattern at Amazon or Uptown Needle and Craft Works here in New Orleans or at your local quilt shop. Um, you need the pattern to be able to understand what's going on and then um, Gigi helps us through it. So join us. Come play with us. Come to our Facebook group, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, go to our website and be part of our newsletter where we'll help you through the Gypsy Wife Quilt. Um, that's JustWannaQuilt.com, spelled W-A-N-N-A, Just Want a Quilt. Um, and of course, listen to our podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and if you can't a chance to like it on those, it would be super awesome. <laughs>